let's not do anything too bad. Nice. Oh! oh. Jacob, mate, would you describe this car as life-changing? Absolutely not. You wouldn't? No. Can't say I would either. That's why the title of this video is Game Changing, because this is the new Toyota GR86. This is the GT variant. So there's a GT, GTS. This is $2,000 less than the GTS. You'll be paying about 48 grand drive away for one of these bad boys. And so even though I think that this thing is, yes, game changing, I wouldn't actually buy this. I probably wouldn't buy a GR86, but I'll explain to you why a little later in the video. For now, I'm gonna tell you all the reasons why I think this is game-changing. Just like your life can be changed when you finance your next car through Driver. Yes, the channel's sponsor. Here's the thing about Driver. They're a fintech startup that is consumer-focused. They're on your side. Unlike other companies which often just work on which pays the highest commission. If you guys wanna support the channel but also get the best financing deals for you, click the link in the description below or the pinned comment. That'll take you to Driver. There you can compare the best financing deals specifically for you. So click the link in the description below or the pinned comment. Jacob, let's review this thing. Let's. <laughs> Jacob, mate, there are some malicious, defamatory rumors about me on the internet. <laughs> like what? Like I'm a Toyota hater. Just because I don't love the Hilux does not mean I hate Toyotas. But anyway, thank God we're here with the Subaru. <laughs> Of course, the GR86 shares pretty much everything, in fact, everything, except for some suspension bits, with the all-new Subaru BRZ. But don't worry, don't worry, this isn't just a Subaru rebadged as a Toyota. This is joint developed with Subaru and Toyota. And I think they've done an absolutely magnificent job. I think they've done an amazing job. Maybe not so with the looks, though, because, frankly, personally, and this is me, I think that the last 86 just looked a bit better. This looks a little bit less macho. You do though have some pretty cool daytime running lights here, bright LEDs there as well. Functional aero that helps to funnel air across the side and that helps with aerodynamics, but also for cooling the brakes. So very cool. You've got an enormous grill here. This thing has grown massively, because why not? That is the age of the, the 2020s, I suppose. Got the GR badge, that stands for Gazoo Racing. That is the performance division of Toyota. Exciting, exciting stuff. Down here you've got a pretty nice splitter with a bit of a sharp edge there that is pretty much the same as what you would find on the previous 86, but otherwise, I don't know, it leaves a little bit to be desired for me. Jacob, what do you think? I think it looks better than the old one. Well, that's just you. Shall we take a look at the side? Let's do it. Coming to the side, here's at least one of the reasons that I would get the GTS over a GT, spending the $2,000 extra. These wheels here are 17 inches and they're wrapped in Michelin Primacy tires. These are like economy car tires. They're really not that great. Yes, it does mean that you can get the back end out a lot easier, but that just means that it's got less grip. If you spend an extra $2,000, not only do you get the 18 inch wheels, which frankly just look better, they are also wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, which are some of the best road tires out there. Really, really good and certainly tires you can use on the track. And that package alone is really worth the $2,000, not to mention all the other stuff that you get. And we'll come back to all that stuff as well. Anyway, rant over, you get some blacked out mirror caps there. That's pretty cool. You also get a double bubble roof. And that means that the roof has been cut out for the passenger and the driver. And that means that you can wear a helmet inside. Really good for track days. Good design thinking. Good design thinking, Jacob. Especially for a car so bloody short. Very Look short. It. It's tiny. It's really small. Makes you look tall. I feel tall. I'm a short king usually, five foot 11. Don't forget it. Here you've got keyless entry and go, and you've also got some frameless mirrors because Jacob, this is a coupe. This is a, a coopy, coopy, zoopy, doopy. Gazoopy. A gazoopy. And then coming to the uh, boom boom of the GR86, I really like this thing. Now being a kind of Subaru, it does have a Subaru design. So the back end here looks very similar to the WRX, Jacob, that you just reviewed. It does. It's very similar tail lights. I really like them. You've also got this fake light bar here at the back. It doesn't light up, but I still think it looks pretty cool. Again, the same as what you'll find on the WRX. Here you've got your reverse camera. Now this doesn't have a 360 camera. That's to be expected. And it has a pretty good reverse camera, but it doesn't actually have any sensors, front or rear. 
So that's really disappointing when you're spending like almost 50 grand. I just can't believe it. Yeah, I don't know if that comes on the GTS to be honest. Um, I'm not sure if it does. So, ah, I don't know, it kind of sucks. And there are more issues, especially with the complete lack of safety tech, but we'll talk about that when we're on the inside. Here's your boot release. That's kind of cool, I suppose. You've also got your Toyota badge there. Down here is a world's smallest diffuser, and you've also got your dual exhaust tips. And this thing actually does sound pretty good. Take a listen. Okay, so coming into the interior and yeah, it's so much better than before, man. Really? Yeah, way better. And there's a couple of reasons that I think that. One of the biggest things for me, one of the biggest issues I had was here in the center, this was just like an open area in the last 86. And so your arm would be there, it would fall in. It was really, really uncomfortable. They've just done a little quality of life thing by adding a bit of padding over there, which you could open up and still access your cup holders, your two USB ports and your AUX port. But it means that you can just rest your arm there when you don't have that open. That's, That's awesome. much better actually. Way, way better. A couple of other things is that they've just tidied it up. So like this air conditioning area is super intuitive. It's easy to use. Big dials here, very similar to the last one. You've also got giant buttons here to change other air conditioning controls. Speaking of, I really like the vents, especially these little circular ones. They're just fun to play with. But it's just the design. It's really nice in here. They clearly like their analog. They clearly Toyota. like their analog. It's not all roses though. So for example, this has a six speaker sound system across the range, uh, pretty bad, pretty bad, very tinny. You can get the bass up really high if that's your thing, uh, but I just, I just really don't like them. You do have some soft touch materials dotted all around, so that's nice. Cloth here. You've also got redesigned armrests, so it's easier to rest your arm there again, but you've also got pretty awesome cup holders there. So in total, this thing has four cup holders, which is pretty impressive for a two plus two tiny sports car. Sometimes you only get one. <coughs> MX-5. Other storage though isn't great. So you've got a little glove box there and that's about it. So yeah, if you have two cups in there, good luck getting your phone in there. That's all I can say. This also has the cloth seats here, which are pretty damn comfortable. They don't feel the nicest. This really does feel like a base model. And that's again, another reason I would just spend the extra $2,000 because if you get the GTS, then you get those ultra suede seats that just feel a lot more premium, although not necessarily any more comfortable. The steering wheel is actually from the facelifted variant of the last generation. That's not a bad thing though. It feels really nice to hold onto. Love the GR badge there. You've got buttons to control everything, including your digital instrument cluster. That's new and it just feels super modern. I love the little torque curve and if you give it a bit of rev, you can just see what your power and torque curves are, and that's just really cool. And also, if you put the car into track mode by turning off traction control, it changes the digital instrument cluster to a really cool screen. I think that's awesome. Last thing that I like, because then I'll get onto what I'm really honestly triggered about, the infotainment display. That's new, and it just feels modern. It feels nice to use, really, really snappy. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both of which are wired. I don't really care though. I like wired more anyway because sound quality is better. It's generally less compressed than in wireless, but also because it charges your phone and this car has no wireless charger. So something to keep in mind. What don't I like? Well, you'll see here, we have a six speed manual. No, I don't not like this. In fact, I really like this. Nice short throws, feels really good, notchy. They say they've changed some synchros, so it should be easier to get this car from neutral to first and also from second to third. You don't notice that. You're not gonna notice that. The thing though that you do notice is the egregious lack of any, any form of modern active safety tech. If you spec this thing with an automatic transmission, which to be fair, you are paying like two grand more or so for, then you get the active safety control. The manual does not get it, it deletes it. You don't get adaptive cruise control. You don't even get lane departure warning, which is just absurd. It's tech that's been around for years and can definitely be implemented in manuals. You just have to look at the Toyota GR Yaris for that, for example. You don't get autonomous emergency braking, which is just, again, something you, you would expect. If you get the manual Subaru BRZ though, you do get some 
of these things. You get rear cross traffic alert, which means that you're not gonna back into a child, for example. That seems like a pretty good thing to have standard here at Toyota. You've also got other things like blind spot monitoring and evasive maneuvering in case you do accidentally try and merge into someone. It should be standard. It should be standard. The fact that this gets nothing not even the blind spot monitoring uh, blows my mind. It really, really does. If you get the auto though, it does come with those things. Every one of those things I've just mentioned as standard. I don't know, man. It's almost like if you're gonna be using this as a daily driver, get the automatic. Although it will be worse, it will be a lot less fun to drive than the manual, you will get those things that will make your quality of life driving this thing around so much better. Very true or just get the BRZ and get the very, very bare minimum. Cause this is not even bare minimum. This is just lacking. Rant over, let's talk about the back seats. Here's the thing about the GR86 and of course the BRZ. This seat where it is right now is where a normal person would sit. And as you can see, there is zero room behind it. So yeah, there's not much hope for me fitting in the back, but let's try it anyway. So we pull a lever here, this seat slides forward. It's actually pretty easy. We get in and we chuck this stuff, which I've strategically left there. No, not really, I just forgot it was there. Okay, so let's put the seat back. Now, I'm okay in terms of my knee room. Yes, it is completely pressed up against the seat in front of me, but it's not the end of the world. And I've got zero toe room, and yeah, my headroom is just awful. Really, really bad. But the person in front of me is going to have their knees up on the dashboard, if they can even fit in there. So adults definitely cannot fit in the back, maybe, maybe in a pinch but good luck with that. Small children are even gonna to struggle to get back here. I put my dog, who's a Groodle, in the back here. I don't think he even loved it, and he's a bloody dog. So keep that in mind. And Toyota slash Subaru know this, so they haven't actually put anything really in the back. You do have like an armrest here with like a little grab handle in case your driver is being a nincompoop up front. You've got your speaker back here, which again, doesn't actually sound very great. These seats are actually genuinely pretty comfortable. They're like a bucket seat. So that's a pretty cool thing. Like the design there again, cloth. But otherwise, Jacob, it's pretty damn basic. Pretty much, yeah. Let's talk about the boot space. Let's. Okay, so the back seats are an absolute nightmare, but what about the boot space? Well, it's a really good story. You get plenty of space in here. Unofficially, this thing goes up against the Mazda MX-5 and this thing destroys it. You've actually got a really usable amount of space. Not only that, you can pull down these little latches, a bit of a reach and you push forward and then you get a flat loading area. It is huge, a lot of space, surprising for such a small car. And you've also got a little bit of underfloor storage there as well. Jacob, I made a bold claim. What was that? I said that this thing is game changing. And I stand by that, frankly, and this is the biggest reason why. So if we open this, ah, oh, oh, hot, hot day. That's not a joke, by the way, it's really hot. This is the game changing part. They've made this engine bigger. So they've gone away from the two liter, naturally aspirated four cylinder, a bit poo, and they've moved to this. This is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder. They actually toyed with the idea of making this thing turbocharged, but decided it was too expensive. They, need, they needed those engines for the WRXs. Mate, story of the 21st century in engines. It's just like, ah, uh, money. That's okay though. I'm kind of happy with this because it is a lot of fun. So this is a boxer engine. That means the pistons are like this. And it also means that you can achieve a lower center of gravity for the car and have a lighter engine. And you might think, oh, well, this is just a Subaru engine. And even though it is derived from the WRX's engine, without a turbo, of course, you do get Toyota bits to it. So it's got the D4S system. That means it has port and direct injection. I'm not gonna pretend to know everything about engines, but I do know that that is a good thing. If you mix a bit of Toyota in there, maybe it'll be a bit more reliable. Blown head gaskets, am I right, Subaru owners? Ah. Not only has it gone up in displacement, it actually puts out a significant amount of power. 174 kilowatt of power, 250 newton meters of torque. That is really impressive, especially for a car that weighs under 1.3 tons, about 1,270 here for the manual. So I think that's all really cool, but the proof is in the pudding, Jacob. Let's launch it. Okay, so now we're gonna launch the GR86. I can't wait. Toyota claims they reckon that this will do 0 to 100 in 6.3 seconds. They're barking mad. We don't have that. We've got like a skill cap. 
you know. Yeah, you're going to hit the rev limit like three times. At least. On the way to 100. At least. So, uh, what do you reckon it's going to do? Is there at 100? 6.7. Mm, I'm I'm a little less optimistic, to be honest. I reckon it's going to be like 6.9 seconds. But perhaps you will be right and I will be wrong. All right, bro. Fist me. Fist me good. Let's do this. Oh. Oh. Oh, what happened there? Really bogged down. Oh, it doesn't get to 100 in second. All right, zero to 108.28 seconds. That let's do that again. That's embarrassing. Take one, guys. Clearly. Take one. All right, bro. Traction is now off. Fist me, fist me hard. Let's not do anything too bad. I'm scared. Bye, buddy, boop. You're nice. at 106 point eight eight seconds. I will take that one. All right. You're the one shifting, so you have all the control. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. I thought we were driving it normally. I'm about to rock your world. God damn! Every time. Okay. <laughs> Traction back on. Because we're responsible human beings. That was a bit wild. Here's a disclaimer. <clears throat> Everything we do is shot and filmed in a private location. Do not attempt at home. We are professionals. Undisclosed location. Okay, get this fly out. 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 I oh, killed oh it. Oh my god, I killed it. Second. Oh yeah, baby. God, that revs high. Oh, this thing is fun. Man. Okay. Normally driving <laughs> the GR86. This is the normal driving section, bro. Well, well frankly, if you're going to be buying one of these, like, we, we know we know the stereotypes. And uh, what can I say? We are the stereotype. Bro, every time I get into a rear-wheel drive with you, I take out life insurance. Sure. Mamma mia. I'll tell you what isn't great about this car. What? The brakes. Yeah. Easy fix, right? Easy fix. You just put on new brake pads, maybe give, you have some, get some new brake oil. Right? Brake, Easy fix. Brake fluid, I should say. And a bit of blinker fluid at the same time. I think so. I don't know, man. Look, let's, I, I'm, I'm a bit infatuated with this thing. It is a lot of fun to drive. I think the quartering is what's, is its strong suit. But let's the give road. this thing some more sauce. Oh my god. It's got a limited slip differential in the rear. I don't have a grab handle. I need a grab handle. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, this is where this thing definitely comes alive in the twisties. It is a lot of fun. All this engine noise you're hearing, by the way, a lot, I'd say the vast majority of it is just being pumped in because it's a lot, it's a lot of noise. It is a boxer engine though, so pistons are like this. Yeah, it's, it's very right. similar to the WRX I did. Very, very similar. And go watch that review, by the way. That was a fun review, Jacob. Mm, well done. One. I enjoyed that one. Well done. But obviously this thing is naturally aspirated, but because it only weighs like 1.3 tons, it's super nimble and lightweight. There's not a big engine in the front. So it handles on an absolute dime. Oh. And friend, what better way to show that than our favorite spot? I'm scared. Saucy bloody corner. I love the feeling of this six speed manual, baby. Let's go. That was with traction on. Okay. Second. I don't want to lose it. about naturally aspirated cars where yeah. if you want to get the most amount of power you really have to wring the neck out take it all the way to red line and this thing is perfect for it oh god there's a public event oh god that just ruins the car review doesn't it oh thanks a lot public jacob let's talk about this bro i can't think when you're driving like this let's talk about this six speed manual 
it's it's really good, right? As in, it's really fun to use. It's definitely the transmission to go for uh, in ninety in 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 fifty percent of the uh, the scenarios, right? Because here in the uh, old GR eighty six, you lose out on a lot of safety tech. In fact, all of it, all of it. You lose out on all the active safety tech, which is just bad. It's bad. There's no adaptive cruise control. There's no lane keep assist, lane departure warning. There's no blind spot monitors. By the way, that's standard on the cheaper, higher spec BRZ. Yeah, there's no AEB. Anyway, we won't we won't rant on on that. Some of you will love that the old analogs. But look, I'm on the wrong side of the road, and no one would know. And no one would know. <laughs> Comfort. That's Excellent. The downshift. And give it some sauce. I feel comfortable. It's pretty comfortable, right? The ride is a bit harsh, but that's kind of what you want. It's, I feel. it's what you want, what you expect. You can't defy physics, right? No. Yeah, so we're low to the road. Dampers are dampening. They're, they're hard. you got hard dampers, right? And that's so that this thing can corner really well. And as we went up towards the corner, you could see we cornered really well. But that, that just affects ride quality. Noise in here, it's quite noisy. And this is technically the most comfortable spec because we are running on the 17 inch alloy wheels. We have thicker rubber, worse tires though than what you'd find on the GTS. Yeah, so pretty fun though. It, it's fun in that you can lose, you know, the back end pretty easily because you're on, you're on economy tires. But the Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's are just they're just substantially better tires, and they really make up for the two thousand dollar cost difference between the GT and the GTS. If you're going to be buying this, if you're going to be buying an eighty six, which honestly you probably just should buy the BRZ, it's just better spec. But if you want the eighty six in particular, then I would definitely get the GTS because not only do you get nicer seats and more standard equipment, you get uh, better wheels and also better tires. That makes a difference. Absolutely. All right, bro. With that. <laughs> Let's get into our final thoughts. My life just flashed before my eyes. <laughs> okay, so final thoughts on the new Toyota GR86. Look, I think this thing is definitely game changing. You've got more power in an affordable rear wheel drive sports car. What's not to love about that? The thing I don't love though, is that it does go up against its own competition, the Subaru BRZ, which is cheaper, better equipped. <laughs> like, go figure. Like. No, I wouldn't buy this. I'd buy a Subaru BRZ. Unless you've got some sort of real affinity to the Toyota brand or you really want to have the GR badge, just get the bloody Subi. Okay? I, I, I fought a fly and I won. Let me know what you guys think though of the new Toyota GR86. Do you also think that this thing is game changing? Subscribe to the channel if you are new and like it, of course. It really helps the channel out. If you need finance, click over there. You'll get the absolute best financing deals. And over there are two videos. One is the WRX, which you should definitely watch. And the other is a Ford Fiesta ST, which is probably the most fun you can have with your pants on.